So I heard about this truck driver who was in a diner enjoying a cheeseburger. So he was eating, minding his own things, and then three bikers, rough guys, entered to a diner. They wanted to pick a fight. You can do it right away. So they go to this trucker. The first of the bikers get some of the French fries, dip it on the ketchup and eat it. The second one get the burger and get a bite from the plate of the trucker. And the third one pick up the pop, get a sip, put everything else on top of the head of the, of the trucker. Truck driver, nothing. All he did, put it in the pocket, pay for the meal, and left. The three bikers were laughing, and they said to the server, <laughs> not much of a man, eh? And she said, yep, not much of a driver either. He just drove his 16 wheelers over three bikes. <laughs> I want to talk to you today about sharing is caring. All the opposite from the joke. Sharing is caring. Have you ever heard that phrase? I think it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Sharing is caring. But the concept of sharing, caring, and giving is something that, according to the rabbis, was embedded in the Torah from the very beginning if you know where to look for. What do I mean? Well, you go to the beginning of the Torah, you, you read the Bereshit, the Genesis, where it says God creates the world, right? Well, what does it say anything about sharing, caring, and giving? Well, the rabbi said, before you start reading the next verses and chapters and books of the Torah, you should ask yourself, yourself the following questions. Why did God create the world? What need God had? To create the world and the answer that the rabbis give is fantastic he said God is a giver but there is no giver without a receiver have you ever thought about that you can have all the intentions you want to give to share with others what you have to care for others but if there is no others there is nothing you can do. The receiver makes you instantly a giver. So God had all this light, all this goodness, all this love that God wanted to share. God wanted to give it, but God did not have a receiver. So the rabbi said, God creates the entire world with one goal to be able to give. So immediately, right from the beginning of the Torah, we learn that we are receivers of the goodness of God, and we receive also to give to others. But there is something very interesting that uh, I mentioned a little bit during the Torah service. Because when we read that ver the, the first verse of the Torah, Rashi, one of the most famous Torah commentators, he says something very interesting, and he quotes the Midrash. He says that Rabbi Yitzchak, not this Rabbi Yitzchak, call it Rabbi Yitzchak, that lived before Rashi. So said, Rabbi Yitzchak says, the Torah should actually begin with two weeks Parsha. The Torah should begin with, this month is for you, the beginning of month. And Rabbi Yitzchak said, you know, yeah, yeah, the first part, the, the Genesis and everything is beautiful, but it's like a more uh, universalist message. But beginning on this Parsha, beginning with that specific commandment for the Jewish people, that is a, a more particularist approach. This is something that is exclusively for the Jewish people. And Rabbi Yitzchak said, this should be the beginning of the Torah. So technically, the Midrash understands that there are two beginnings of the Torah. One is Bereshit, Genesis, and one is this one. But, but, the rabbis say, if the Bereshit starts with a teaching, with a message 
of giving and caring, shouldn't this other beginning, the more particular beginning, should have the same message embedded? The concept of giving, of caring, shouldn't it? And the rabbi said, it does. Because immediately after the opening verse, the verse that says, this is the first month for you. In other words, hey, you are free people. The first thing you have to have is a calendar. Because now you are responsible for your own time. Right? It's very interesting because immediately after the next verse, it says, what you have to do next is go get a lamb. Okay? Remember the, the lamb for the, for the, the, for the Passover Seder? Get a lamb. And then it says, if that lamb is too much for you, what you have to do is to share it with your next door neighbor. And there you have it. Right at the beginning of this specific section of the Torah that speaks exclusively to the Jewish people, we also have, so we won't forget, this important message that we have to learn from the beginning of the giving of the law that the goal for us is also to become givers, the same way that God is a giver. And we have to understand that many times we feel that we are blessed, that God is blessing us, we can feel the blessing. And sometimes we have so much that we could share with others. And this is exactly what this Parsha says. It said, if you feel that you have many things that maybe is Literally, too much for you. What are you going to do with all that? Find somebody else who doesn't have it and share it with them. And the Torah doesn't say, hey, if you don't have, go find somebody else who will give you. No, it puts res the responsibility on the one who does have it, who does feel the blessing. If you are such a person, don't wait until somebody knocks at your door and says, hey, do you have this and that? No, you have to purposely go and find a receiver in the same way that God wanted to give and created a whole world for the sake of giving. What a wonderful thing that is to, to learn from the very beginning of these laws to become givers. And there is more because this is right before the description of the very first Seder that we have. And we also know that the most important aspect of the Seder is the involvement of our kids. Have you ever thought about that? The whole Seder that we have, it's all about teaching our children. And perhaps also the first thing that we have to teach our children is for them, from very little, that sharing is caring. And the concept of sharing and the concept of giving is a priority in Judaism, and we all have to learn that. Now, giving, why is so important? Because I believe that giving and sharing and caring is a powerful tool to bring light and joy to our lives. Even when we are going through difficult times, I believe, I, I, actually, I believe that even more so when you're going through difficult times, the best way to bring joy and light to your life is to give. I know it sounds like a counterintuitive, right? Because if you are going through difficult times, you don't feel like giving to others. You know, you feel like maybe you should have others giving to you. You are in need. You need things. I am going through such difficult time. Why should I give to others? Because that's what we do. When we feel that even, th even through or even during th that difficulty, if we, you feel that you still have something to give to others, that is the most amazing feeling. That is the way that we have to count our blessings, even when we feel that we have darkness around us. And talking about darkness, all these commandments were given to the Jewish people right after the ninth plague, the plague of darkness. And the darkness that is described in the Torah 
It's a very special and very particular darkness. I don't know if you ever thought about that. I shared this message with a group of young adults last night just because I, 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 all of the, I don't know, I read Torah all the time. And sometimes I have these ideas. I said, oh, how come I never saw this before? Now I have to share it. <laughs> I want to share it with other people. And it's the concept that the plague of darkness, I always imagine literal darkness. You know, when you shut the light and everything is dark and you can't see anything? That's the way I imagine the, the ninth plague. But that's not the description of the Torah at all. Because it says that it was a darkness that people could feel it. What is a darkness that you feel? When do you feel that you are going through dark times? When we have difficulties and when we are depressed. And the Torah says, and I will read because I want to be literal of what it says. It says, the Egyptians, they did not see one another and no one could move. Listen to that description. Feel it. When, you know, when do we feel that we can't move? That we can't do anything? Right? And at the same time, it said the Egyptians did not see one another. And the rabbis explained they didn't care about one another. Why? Because, hey, I'm going through a plague. This is a difficult time. Sorry, I cannot do anything for you. And in the same verse said, but the Israelites enjoy light in their dwellings. The Israelites enjoy light in their dwellings. What was the difference between the Egyptians at the time and the Israelites at the time? The description is the Egyptians was all about my problem. And the Israelites is, what can I do for you? Can I share my lamb with you? Can I share what I have with you? And it says, when you take that attitude, even in the midst of darkness, you are bringing light to whatever you are. Because the Torah doesn't say that they had light in Goshen which is the city where they live. He said the Israelites had light in their dwellings. It means whatever they were, even if they were outside of Goshen, even if they were in the middle of Egypt, they still found a way to bring light to their lives in the middle of darkness. And I believe this is very important because the Jewish people is going through dark times. You don't believe me? It's because you don't read the newspaper or you don't watch TV. We are going through very dark times. There is suffering for our brothers and sisters everywhere in the world. We feel, we feel that we cannot move. What is the way to get out of that? What is the way to get out of that place? I take the words of the Torah as the most beautiful inspiration for these days. Instead, instead of taking a position of suffering and poor me, we should take a position of what can I do for others? What can I do to help? Yes, we have problems as Jews here in Canada. But we can still help the people in Israel. We can still help other Jews in Canada that they are going through all this situation in a worse way than we are. And we can do something for them. Don't go through this difficult time thinking what other people can do for me. Go through this difficult time thinking what you can do for other people, what you can give, how you can help. And when you take that attitude, you're going to have light even in the middle of darkness. And you will be able to add light and joy to your life. Shabbat Shalom.